D-Lo for, for boxing. All right, y'all, we'll speak a little bit on this Errol Spence Jr. Terry Crawford press conference. First and foremost, I want to say it was good to see it take place. Um, for a fight that has escaped us as long as this one has, one that's been anticipated for so long, um, this is a fight me personally, I've been wanting to see ever since Crawford left 140 and moved up 147. Um, you know, I wanted to see him fight Errol Spence Jr. or Keith Thurman. You know, I was I was cool with him fighting Danny Garcia if the opportunity presented itself. You know, I wanted to see him get an opportunity against um, Sean Porter as well, which we eventually got. But Errol Spence was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Errol Spence was the one I wanted to see because Errol Spence was the guy that the everyone who thought, you know, Keith Thurman was the man at 147 due to, you know, being unified and his resume and all of that and the way he looked in the ring, we also saw the way Keith Thurman conducted himself when he came to Errol Smith Jr. So to me, I looked at Errol Smith Jr. as the man to beat at 147, just based off of that. Um, I felt like at, at that point, uh, at, at that point, though, Errol Smith didn't have to beat Keith Thurman. He had already beat him, you know, as far as I'm concerned, because Keith Thurman was very reluctant and openly reluctant to get in the ring with that man and made a million excuses. So I looked at Errol Smith Jr. as the man in the division. Now that said, you know, we saw how everything played out with Keith Thurman. So of course it's easier to say that in hindsight, you know, um, and I would have loved to have seen Errol Smith versus Keith Thurman as well. I don't want to, I don't want to take away from, you know, who Keith Thurman was at that time, but enough about Thurman back to this press conference. Like I said, been anticipating this fight for a long time. There are lots of videos out there uh, from both sides talking about the fight going back, you know, five years. Um, there's videos from 20, I think it was 2018, where one side or the other, other saying they guarantee they, the fight's going to happen the next year. And it took a few more years for it to happen. But we're here now. So I said all that to say this. Getting to see a press conference that announces is announcing the fight, that's a, a, a much bigger step forward than we've ever been. So, I mean, to, to me at this point, there's no turning back. <laughs> you know, uh, so I, I'm just uberly excited about the fight happening. Um, as far as what I saw in the press conference, I saw two guys. Who, who really want to, you know, they're, they're looking forward to the opportunity to get in the ring with each other and test their medal against each other. Uh, two trainers who know they got their hands full um, on strategizing and game planning, um, and, and, you know, to basically get that fighter to victory in that fight. I know a lot of people are um, watching the fight and they all of a sudden become, you know, uh, armchair psychologists and psychiatrists. And they're talking about Spence's voice cracking and, and that means he's scared and Bud Crawford stuttering and that means he's scared. All I got to say is, um, well, I got a question to ask. For those of you who are saying that, is this your first time listening to these guys do interviews or talk publicly, speak publicly? Because <laughs> I've even seen like promos, like channel introduction videos with Errol Spence Jr. doing a clip back from like 2017, 2016. Well, he's saying follow him on Instagram and his voice is cracking like I don't know what. I've seen video of Terry Crawford talking about his previous fights or something and he's stuttering. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Y'all y'all reach. At the end of the day, we got the fight we say we want it. I guess all of the back and forth is, is good to build up and promote the fight. But y'all still tearing these fighters down. For the sake of trying to build up the other guy. When it, it's totally unnecessary. It was unnecessary to start with. It's really unnecessary at this point. Because we're going to get the fight. We're going to get to see who is who and what is what. The cream is going to rise to the top. And, and we're going we're gonna to have a definitive pound for pound. Number one. Undisputed number one. I mean undisputed in the welterweight division. But also undisputed as number one. Pound for pound in my opinion. But because pound for pound is a subjective opinionated list it's going to always be somebody else that people are going to say is pound for pound number one but as far as i'm concerned 
there's no dispute in my mind that the winner of this fight is the best pound for pound fighter in the sport of boxing. That's why I'm excited about it. That's why I've been wanting to see it for so long. That's why I can't wait to peel off the uh, 84 99 or whatever it is to pay for the fight and support it. Because, like I said previously, if we demand certain things of the sport of boxing and we get those things, it's incumbent upon us to show up and support. You know, whether that be from buying a pay per view, merchandise, being at the fight, or with content creators, put out content that supports the fight, you know, that builds momentum for the fight, not tear it down. And, and, and lastly, I want to say this again. I've said this plenty of time. A lot of y'all have made a lot of money talking about these two fighters in this fight over the last five years. Now it's time to give back. You know what I'm saying? Now it's time to, to, to put the, uh, you know what I'm saying, to put your wallet where your mouth is. Support the fight. Make videos in support of the fight. <laughs> Stop trying to discredit these guys. Because if you if you in support of one guy and you're trying to tear down the other guy, ultimately you you're tearing down both guys. Because if you tear down the other guy and the guy you support goes out and beats him, then you can't come back and act like the guy was a world beater and your fighter's done something monumental because he beat the guy that you said was, was garbage or you said hadn't fought nobody or you said was scared or you said um, was a hype or whatever the case may be. I'm going to leave it on that. Much respect to Terry Crawford and Errol Smith Jr. for getting this fight done. Neither one of these guys got it done by themselves. It wouldn't be a fight if they both didn't want to be there. It wouldn't be a fight if they both didn't stubbornly push for the fight and say, hey, and this is what we want and we're not moving from this point. I'm glad we're here. Look forward to the press conference that comes out today. That's going to um, be live today. And, and I can't wait for July 29th. That's all I got on it. D-Lo 404 Boxing. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace.